Brooklands, once the centre for cutting-edge motor car research, then an aircraft factory churning out wartime fighters, later an experimental airfield, is now partly a motor and aviation museum, as well as the home for the London Bus Museum. Today's bus fest attracted crowds for the running buses as well as other transport-related exhibits. A horse bus plied for hire throughout the day. This 1890 three-light garden seat vehicle was pulled by a couple of long-suffering but immaculate greys. In front of the clubhouse, five 1920s motor buses gleamed in the sunshine. This 1922 Tilling Stevens TS3A petrol bus was sold at auction in June of this year for £216,540. It was once part of the Michael Banfield collection. Tilling Stevens buses are petrol driven, but the engine turns an electric generator connected to two traction motors on the rear wheels. It was said that previous horse bus drivers found the transition easier than to clutch and gearbox. The company operated 300 London buses by 1923. This bus left London service in 1931. S454 is an AEC S-Type from 1922, operated by the London General Omnibus Company. It recently changed hands for £281,500. The replica body here is dated from 1966. During the independent days, AEC was the preferred chassis builder, although Leyland was a fierce contender. After the takeover by London Transport Passenger Board in 1934, it became its manufacturer of choice also. The London General Omnibus B-Type of 1910 was one of 2,500 to see service. At the outbreak of the Great War in 1914, there was a shortage of army transport, so some of these buses were converted and pressed into military use. B2737 is here bedecked in its army uniform. It is usually seen in shiny red and cream at the London Transport Museum. Its drab guise is to commemorate the centenary of the start of the Great War. During August and September, it toured the battlefields in Belgium. D142 is a 1925 Dennis operated by the London General Omnibus Company. Although the LGOC was absorbed into the London Passenger Transport Board in 1934, this bus was not. It slips off the radar from 1931 until its discovery in Wickford, Essex, being used as a storage shed in 1971. It took three years to restore and since has travelled to Japan as well as touring the UK. Look out for it on TV historical dramas. From 1924, this Leyland LB5 was one of the last independents to run the streets before being subsumed by the London Passenger Transport Board. It went to the LPTB in 1934, but saw no more service in the capital. Mike Sutcliffe rescued it from dereliction at a Norwich farm in 1984. It has gone to win several awards for its presentation. Its petrol side valve engine is quiet in operation. The constant mesh gearbox gives a smooth ride. The first pre-war AEC Regent 3, or RT, went onto the streets in 1939, but the prototype, RT1, had been around since 1938 in some form. 
Once the main production got going after the war, over 7,000 were made. It was the standard bus for London, with the only variations being the source of the engines and bodies. All were built to a modular design so that parts could be interchanged. When it first arrived from AEC, RT1, the first of its kind, was just a chassis. Chiswick Works quickly adapted a scrapped Leyland Titan body to try it out. A proper RT body came along a little later and it joined the increasing fleet. After a few overhauls and the 35 years of service, it lay disused at the back of West Ham Garage, before being rescued by Prince Marshall, a rich enthusiast. It fell victim to crippling death duties when he died, suffering the indignity of being shipped to America to become a burger van. This iconic and historic vehicle returned to the UK in 1986 for restoration and it is now safe in pristine condition as a full-time member of the museum fleet. RTL139 is one of 1,631 built with a chassis made from Leyland. Still to the standard interchangeable design, this one is from 1949 and carries a Park Royal body. UMP227 is a 1949 AEC prototype with a Park Royal body that paved the way for the long-running Regal 4 or RF series. A horizontal diesel engine sits behind the offside front wheel, the next progression from the pre-war Q-type. In May 1950, the prototype entered service on loan to London Transport, allocated to the St Albans garage for Route 355. It was never allocated a fleet number. After just a year, it returned to the AEC factory where it became a test bed for further development work. London Transport went on to order 700 of these buses with Metro Camel bodies, which became the standard RF class. The production of RF single-deck buses and coaches started just in time for the Festival of Britain in May 1951. There will be 780 in six categories, including this BEA airport transfer variant with a semi-decker Park Royal body. The rear lower deck was reserved for baggage. These saw service until 1973, with the bus and coach RFs finally becoming extinct in 1978. The 84 Guy Specials were designed by London Transport to replace the pre-war Leyland Cubs for rural routes. These buses entered service in 1953 and were still going strong into the late 1960s. GS34, currently in the museum, was sent to Garston near Watford in 1963 to become a crash gearbox training vehicle until the formation of London Country Bus Services in 1970. By 1960, the thoughts of London Transport's planners were turning to the future replacement of the 715 RF single-deckers, as well as to move on to one-person operation. The novel introduction of separate entrance and exit doors is designed to reduce the dwell time at bus stops. Between 1960 and 1963, the three RWs were tested in service at various London Transport country area garages, including St Albans and Adelston. London Transport's caution regarding the centre exit meant that they were never tried out in the central area. The experiment was clearly a success as the dual door arrangement subsequently became standard London practice and remains so to this day.
Most commentators derided the Route Master even before it went into production. It was obsolete, they said. Its front engine, rear platform, double decks, and worst of all, its requiring the fast becoming extinct conductor flew in the face of modern trends. High capacity standee single deckers was the way forward, they said. The rather high cost of production, with clever innovations such as automatic transmission, integral monocoque body, no separate chassis, power steering, air suspension, saloon heaters and air brakes, made maintenance a headache for depots where trolleybuses had reigned supreme. London Transport insisted that the route master would work, despite all of this. More than 50 years later, and the mark is still going strong. These buses will still operate on London's routes, had not the needs of disabled passengers required a rethink of bus design. Ex-London Transport RM 1871 dates from 1964, yet was chosen to become a special for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. It received an all-over silver paint job, plush carpets and a renumber to SRM 7. It is one of two out of the 25 specials to remain in the UK. Since 1997 it has been owned and operated by Time Bus of St Albans, Hertfordshire. The coach variant of this type was fitted with faster transmission, plush seats and a door to keep out the drafts. Twin headlights and a stylish paint job gave them a thoroughly distinctive appearance that private coach operators could not match. The city bus version was quick off the mark, smooth to ride in once the initial problems with the automatic gear change had been solved. Apart from traffic congestion, the biggest delay is bus stop dwell times. This configuration was a winner and that lives on now in the new bus for London. London Country Bus Services, hived off from London Transport the previous year, took delivery of these impressive AEC Reliance Park Royal coaches for its prestigious 727 Luton Heathrow Gatwick Airport Express service in 1971. Later downgraded to bus work, this 90-strong series finally went the way of Womble Diesels and elsewhere in 1983. This last of the line is one of the only two that now remain. This Leyland National was built in 1976 for Alder Valley in the Aldershot area. In 2007 it featured in a Virgin Atlantic TV advert. It is owned by Paul Barrett and Alan Fairbrother, who are in the process of refurbishing the bodywork in preparation for a total respray. The London Bus Museum houses the world's largest collection of working London buses. The new, purpose-built site offers space and maintenance facilities not available in the previous Cobham site. The museum tells the 200-year story from horse bus to the birth of the modern bus. There are many historic vehicles not running today. Today, the large floor space vacated by the running vehicles has been put to good use. All sorts of memorabilia, books, models, maps, timetables, even bits of bus are here for sale. Something for every anorak. Thank <laughs> you. 
There was a Punch and Judy for the little ones and a jazz quartet to serenade us from the balcony. Thank you.